And as I told you earlier, the finance minister is joining us. He is the architect of the Ford's government's fall economic statement. Thank you very much for joining us. It's great to be Minister here, Phillips. Thank you. So I'm going to ask you right off the top, is this sort of just a sheep in wolf's clothing or are, are you really the softer, gentler economic fiscal bearer? Well, you know, this is a plan that uh, reflects what Ontarians talk to us about in terms of their priorities. They want us to make sure that we're balancing the budget, and we've made $1.3 billion of, uh, of progress on that, so our, our deficit is going to be uh, lower than projected this year. They want us to invest in things like health care, education, and children, and again, $1.3 billion of added spending. So and is this an acknowledgement that the budget was too much, too fast, sort of cut first, ask questions later, and you got a lot of pushback from voters? You know, we're never going to apologize for listening. And we've been listening uh, to people in Ontario. So I'll take that as a yes. Well, they, we've been listening. And you know what? Um, they've told us about the things they like. They like the fact that we've reduced taxes for individuals by $3 billion. That's that's good. Um, but they, they've also let us know where there are important investments that need to be made. And I think as a government, you should expect us to uh, to listen to what voters say, listen to what Ontarians say, and, uh, and make changes. But the good news is we're able to advance um, on our priority of, of getting that uh, deficit under control. We're on track to balance the budget by 2023. And we're able to make an added investment, $1.9 billion more more in healthcare spending this year than last year after this financial statement. And does, is that above the rate of inflation? Because the NDP, for example, have long said that yes, you were spending more on healthcare, but the actual money per patient was less because it hadn't kept up with inflation. Yeah, so again, that represents about a 3% increase in spending, which, which is above uh, the rate of inflation. In the case of education, again, with an additional spend, so now $1.2 billion more than last year. Does that That's mean a 4 you can, you can increase? give teachers more than a 1% raise? Well, you know, we want to make sure we prioritize what's best for the students and uh, so again you know we will keep funding the important areas that we have to healthcare education obviously support for our most vulnerable but still on that path to uh, to balancing the budget is it new money is that 1.3 billion new money or is it money that that was sort of taken out of the system in the budget. Listen, the, both of those numbers um, are, are the record spending numbers in healthcare and education. So no government has spent more on healthcare in the history of Ontario than this government, and no money, no government has spent more on education. But the population we did have that, is growing, to that, be fair. That, no, that is true. And and we, you know, we had uh, the benefit of better revenues. Uh, corporate tax rates or corporate taxes were higher. Personal taxes are higher. So that's given us about 1.6 billion dollars more in revenue. And we want to make sure that when we get that opportunity, again, we balance those priorities that Ontarians elected us to do. So you've, you've had some, some luck with the finances and more revenues coming in, but many people are, are warning, experts are warning, that there's going to be a, a turndown and that we've, we've been lucky for 10 years, but we're facing an economic slowdown. Is there enough written in here to protect Ontario from that? Well, you know, I mean, we, uh, I always, uh, my mother always say, you make your own luck. So one of the things that, uh, that we see is that the changes we've made in terms of making Ontario a more business-friendly environment has created more jobs, 272,000 more jobs since we were elected, but also has created more revenue. So, so when you do the right things for the economy, people make more money, they do end up paying more taxes, and that all goes into our ability to fund the kind of services we talked about. But, you know, our projections um, are quite prudent. Um, our projections in terms of economic growth are actually lower than the private sector economists projections. So we are uh, being very careful because we're talking about the taxpayers' dollars. Um, we're obviously making sure that Ontario is in a good place um, regardless of what happens in the economic uh, climate globally. And again, getting on that path to balance by 2023 helps ensure that. Minister Phillips, thank you very much for joining us here on City News.